well, the fabrics are made flat and women are round and there's this terrible problem of putting the two together, you know. Which is why I want to make round clothes uh, with no seams so that we can be rounder and smoother than we are, you know. And uh, really, it's how I got into this shoe thing. Um, because I've never had a pair of comfortable shoes in my life and the same thing, you know, feet are a very complex shape. And I wanted to make shoes which were like uh, uh, glass or bottles and have no seams and no bits that rub and all that and all bendy and loose. I also wanted them to join up with the stockings and just be a sort of one cool line. So uh, there were some chaps who just invented this, this way of making things. We would just pour a kind of chewing gum in, into a mold, into a last, um, and, and you get out what you want. And, you know, rather like making a sort of jelly. And so they said, well, well sort of more, let's come and play with my machinery. And this is how we started making these shoes. So using this method again, you, you are pouring in sort of chewing gum into a last, uh, you know, just like making a jelly, you're pulling it out. Either, either you can put the sock inside so you seal it onto it, or you can put a, the stocking tight inside so it's uh, naturally fused to the thing. And then really, it's like a Cinderella thing. You have, you're walking on air or walking on a glass slipper. I, I got involved with the makeup bit because um, now that the clothes were different, the face was wrong. Uh, you see, there was still this very artificial uh, hard to the makeup and uh, hair, you know, dressed up as a, as a sort of wedding cake and things like that. And so I wanted hair, whether it was straight or curly, to be natural. And um, makeup to be, um, you know, as though you, you didn't wear any makeup at all, but um, just, well, you know, as though we were all born better looking than we are. <laughs> I, I felt that, that lipstick should look like, rather like, um, a modern man's uh, lighter. There are two colours, so you use a kind of shiny bit, and then the other bit, which, which um, in fact, just, just sort of somehow picks up the colour of one's own uh, skin. No, isn't really a colour at all. Then the paint box bit. You know, I, I, I'm so messy, I can never find the right brushes and the right bits. So I wanted a box where everything was in the same box. Also, very few pieces, but pieces that. As with a paint box, you can mix the colour you want from day to day when you want to change, you know, and it's all there in the same box, and there it is, and a great big glass thing. So, so I did a thing like that. Then they were made of plastic, and I love plastic. What's made of plastic? Why do we apologise and pretend it's gold, you know? It's, um, it's you know, 100 carat good plastic. I wanted it to look like that so, that, so there it was, and white plastic. The daisy, which has always been, I don't know, a sort of luck of my life, you know, somehow. I used to doodle these daisies everywhere, and I'm, nervous, you know, and then they got on the clothes and then became formalised and it became that daisy. I think the point of fashion is not to get bored with looking at somebody. I think the point of clothes for women uh, should be, uh, one, that you're noticed, two, that you look sexy, and um, three, that you feel good. I can't see that we wear them to keep warm. I just feel that as long as women are alive and enjoying being alive, whatever age they are, they should take, use, eat, wear the clothes of their time. You know? And uh, that fashion is for now, not for necessarily teenagers, not for necessarily being 20 and 30 and old and dead in. Fashion is for now. And if you're still enjoying living and you're still enjoying being a woman and being sexy and being alive, then, you know, one wants, surely, to wear the clothes of today. It has nothing to do with age or anything else, it seems to me.